Oh, hi. Uh, we're down in the basement because the power company just replaced the power meter with a new smart meter. And when they did that, they disconnected the power and everything sort of went down. They disconnected it long enough for my UPS to drain. So um, everything in the server room went dark. And of course, a couple things didn't reboot. Uh, so ended up having to have some, you know, have some issues with, hey, the internet's not working, what is going on? And it turns out that this little bugger up here, let me uh, turn this off, it's a ground fault interrupter, and it's interrupted. It's no longer working. You see that little red light right there? That is my main power for the server room. So everything in the server room went down. Surprise, surprise. So I was able to trace it down to the faulty ground fault interrupter. So I'm going to replace that. And to replace it, I'm going to take this panel off and trace the wires back to the breaker, make sure that the breaker is off. Uh, probably mark it on here because I didn't mark it last time like a dork. And we'll go from there. Okay. Apologize for any foul language that comes your way. So it is this last one. And we are correct. Okay. So I got an S1 square bit. I like this because of this little green LED. Okay, I am going to transfer power from the extension cord that I have plugged in to this outlet. We'll see if my UPS lasts long enough for me to transfer that. Yes, yes it does. Okay, we are never going to use this GFCI again. So, I think it's time to see if we can take it apart. Because why not? This is screwed together. Ah, okay. We're gonna have to find a tiny little Phillips screwdriver. I will save you the trouble of uh, showing you how to get these screws out because these screws are not meant to come out. I had to use some of my uh, screws that are not made to come out persuasion tools, but I was finally able to get them removed. I'm going to pull all these stickers off because sometimes they are structural. Uh, it's no longer UL certified because it quit working. All right, so now, well that was easy. What it looks like is this button got 
cocked in here somehow and was getting stuck behind this, but that is not what seems to have happened with the electrical stuff. So, I'm not entirely sure. Um, can we get this further apart? Maybe. Maybe. Well, that part comes out. That part comes out. That's the test button part. So this is connected. So can we get the button off? Ooh. Does this need some persuasion as well? Nope, that's just a cover for something. Come on, don't be like that. Well, there's some fun bits. So that is inside of a ground fault interrupter. It's a lot more, uh, a lot more electronics than I thought there would be. So I believe these are sense coils in here that are they're like current transformers. They'll take and get a voltage depending on the current that's flowing through both legs of the circuit, and if the current going in matches the current going out then they cancel each other out and nothing happens. But if, for instance, the hot wire uh, runs into something and is shorted to ground, then that's a ground fault condition. And one of these is much higher than the other, so that shows a potential, and that triggers a little actuator in here that springs and opens these uh, contacts. It's a nice clever design, I just didn't realize there was that much electronics in there. Anyway, kind of cool. Kind of nice to see what's inside one of these. Never going to use it again. See ya.